All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are going to be generating their own rules, creating their own rules to, to match a particular pattern or a, a goal that they've been given. So let's get started. So first, we're supposed to write a rule for a line that contains these two points. So let's zoom in on those two points and let's think about this for a second. So when we look at these two points, uh, I'm going to say, well, let's see. To go from zero to a quarter, that gets bigger by one quarter, one fourth. And if I look over here, two and a half, add a quarter. So if I add one fourth, that does give me two and three quarters. Just so if I go from zero and add one fourth, that does give me one fourth. One fourth. So I can see that the rule is take your x value and add one fourth, and that gives you your y value. So how would we write that? Well, there's one way. One way to write it is say, take your x value, add one fourth, and that gives you your y value. So that's one way that we could write our rule. And if we wanted to identify two more points on this line, I could say, well, let's take uh, 3. And then if we're going to add 1 qu quarter to that, that would be 3 and a quarter. And so our ordered pair would be 3 and 3 and a quarter. All right. And then if I want to add another point, oh, let's do uh, 1 half. I could say, okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. So if I want 1 half as my x, 1 half. And I'm going to add a quarter to that, so that's going to be three quarters. So my ordered pair is one half, three quarters, and there you go. Boy, parents and teachers, this is a perfect idea, uh, I mean a perfect reason for doing using fractions in your number talks. Man, I could totally see a reason, like a, the benefit of doing uh, almost daily number talks involving fractions, especially for our fifth graders, especially after they've already learned about fractions, especially mental math with fractions. How can you add a half plus three quarters in, or a half plus a quarter and get three fourths in your head? How can we do that without having to go through literally finding a common denominator and all of that sort of stuff? So if ever there was, a, I don't know, proof that we need to do fraction number talks right here is um, an example of that. So then it says, uh, identify two points on the line. Oh, now we're supposed to draw the line on the grid. So we have four points. We have these two points plus these two points. So let's, let's do that. Let's plot all of those points. So first we're going to plot zero comma one quarter. So zero plus, I mean zero comma one quarter is going to go right there. And then we're going to go back up here and we see that we're supposed to do two and a half, two and three quarters. So two and a half and then two and three quarters is going to be right there. So two and a half, two and three quarters. Let's see. It's going to be right there. Now, do I have that in the right spot? There's my two and a half. And then there's my two and three quarters right there. And now we are going to plot the two points that we just created. So we've got three comma three and a quarter. So let's see, three and three and a quarter. Boy, that's going to go right there. Right, yeah, right there. Boom. And we know we're right because we've got three and three and a quarter. And then the last one, one half and three fourths. So one half and three fourths, a little bit easier because it's all close to the axes. You've got one half and three quarters. And there's our points. Intr coincidentally, they're kind of in pairs. That's a total coincidence. Now write a rule. Oh, and we need to draw the line, of course. So let's draw that line, and it's going to go like this. And there we go. All right, and so 
Now it says write a rule for a line that is parallel to BC. So, oh, B and C. So B, we should label these. B is three and three and a quarter, so that's B right there. And C is way down here. And goes through the point. So write a rule for a line that is parallel to this, but goes through one, two and a quarter. So one, two and a quarter. So let's get our little one and two and a quarter. Boom. Are we right? Let's see. One, two and a quarter. Yep, there it is. So now what we see is we could see that this point right here has been shifted up by one, two, three, four. It's been shifted up by four quarters or one whole. Now, how do I see that? Well, I'm going to zoom in here and I see that we got a point right there. All right, because it perfectly crosses through the crosshairs on the hatch marks on both the X and the Y axis. And I can see that one, two, three, four. It's been shifted up by one. So it takes this original rule and adds one more to it. So that means I could take my original rule, which was, uh, let's see, I'm going to get there, which was X plus one fourth equals y, but we want to shift it up by one whole more. So I'm just going to stick on an extra one there. So there's x now is being shifted up by not just a quarter, but it one and a quarter. And that's our new rule. So if if we wanted to draw the line, it it would take this point, shift it up by one, take this point, shift it up by one, and everything would be shifted up by one, and we would have a nice parallel line. Now, the idea is we're going to continue, and it says give the rule for a line, and we just kind of did all of this sort of same stuff. So, parents and teachers, I'm going to skip this because I think you get the idea. At this point, now it's up to you uh, parents and teachers and the students to kind of go through that legwork. But now you get the idea of what it is we're expected to do for this lesson. So here is just an, another example of just lots of work. So this really is a very long lesson. Teachers consider splitting this up over the course of two days, maybe doing it in class, doing it in group activities somehow, because there's just a ton of work in this lesson. So it says, give the rule for a line that contains these two points, uh, but we want it to use addition. And then we're going to find two more points following that rule. Okay, so this rule, they say, we want to use addition. So we want to connect three quarters to one half using addition. So that means we're going to take our x value and add by three-fourths, and that gives us our y value. Because three-fourths, which is x, plus another three-fourths gives us one and one-half. So there is our rule. Now, once we have our rule, we get to choose any values for x, and then add three-fourths to them, and that gives us our new value for y, and that gives us our ordered pair. <clears throat> I'm going to skip that part. Let's take a look at a line that is parallel to the x-axis, but it's got to run through this point. So if it's going to be parallel to the x-axis, that means the y-coordinate is going to stay the same. So our y-coordinate is always going to be 1 and a half. So a line that goes through this and is parallel to the x-axis means the y is always one and a half. That's one way you can write your rule. And then it doesn't matter what x values you choose because the y value is always going to be one and a half. Taking a look at multiplication, how do we connect three fourths and one and a half using multiplication. Well, we want students to be able to see that three-fourths could look like this. Right? 
right? And if you have two of those, let's see if I can do this in one step here. Oh, look at that. If you have two of those, you actually have one and a half because you could take this quarter here, fill it in over here, and so now that quarter is gone. This quarter is no longer here. And so what do you end up with? Well, you end up with one and a half. So if we take this three-fourths and double it, you get one and a half. So that's a nice way of seeing that our multiplication is take your x value. Oops, I don't want it to be so thick. So take your x value, multiply by 2, and that gives you your y value. And now we just choose any values for x and double it, and that gives us our y. And if we want a line that is going through this point, 3 fourths, comma, 1 and a half, and if we want that line going parallel to the y-axis, so that means we need the x value to always stay the same, which is 3 fourths. So we put our rule could be x is always 3 fourths. And that's one way to write that rule. And then the last rule, we're going to do multiplication with addition. So just to remind you, the point that we're doing it on is 3 fourths and 1 and a half. I think I'm right. Yeah. Three fourths and one and a half. So now we want to kind of a mixture of a rule. We want some multiplication and some addition. So what could we do? Well, if we multiply by two, that gives us one and a half. Exactly. So our that wouldn't really work because it would be multiply by 2 and add by 0, and that's kind of cheating. Uh, so let's see. What could we do? Well, we could m multiply by 1 and then add. Would that be kind of? Yeah, we could do that. Well, that would be kind of like really the same thing here. That would be addition. That would multiply by 1 and add by 3 fourths. Well, some students would do that, and that would be fine, and that would be really cool. Let's see if we could come up with another one. Let's see. How about if we multiplied by a third? This is good. Oh, this is a good one. We could multiply the x value by 1 third. That would give us 1 fourth. And then add... 1 and 1 fourth. That's one rule. That would work. And the way we might write it is we might say, take your x times by 1 third and then add by 1 and a fourth. So we could do it that way. That's one way to write it. And I used, notice I used a dot. That might not be familiar to all of our fifth graders. Uh, so parents and teachers, you might need to explain that. Take your x, multiply by a third, and that's going to give you one and a quarter. Now, once we have that rule, and of course, because this one we have a lot of choices and options, so that might not be the same rule that all of your students come up with. Uh, but once we have that rule, we could choose our values for x, random values for x, and follow through with our little recipe, and that gives us our y values. And that really wraps up a, a rather long lesson. Fifth grade, module six, lesson 12. Students are going to be creating their own rules to match a particular, to create a, a pattern to match a particular point that students have been given.